Morning guys and welcome to Lord C's Garage. So today I'm super excited and a bit nervous as well. So as some of you may have seen, um, I bought a 1932 Singer engine that's been sat for about 30 years. Um, basically very rusty. Uh, when I stripped it, um, the block had a number of cracks in the top of it. Being a cast iron block uh, and also particularly poor castings from Singer at the time, um, the only solution really is to cold stitch it. Sometimes that's possible, sometimes it's not. Uh, the block itself is, is very thin and lightweight as it formed the basis for a Le Mans car. Uh, so I'm off this morning to Burton-on-Trent to uh, hopefully see if the guys manage to resurrect it um, and see if we can make it usable and put it in a car ultimately and drive it. I've been vapor blasting a number of parts as you can see from this. Absolutely incredible the vapor blasting process. It makes the aluminium look like brand new. Uh, but also been blasting the various other engine components, including the block, which has come up uh, amazingly, uh, as you can see from this, uh, even highlighting the original casting mark on the side of it, 27th of August, 1932. But as you can see, uh, this is the worst of the cracks, uh, but a number of other hairline cracks. So what is cold stitching? Well, when you're unfortunate enough to have a crack in your cast iron block or head, like this, um, generally, old cast iron can't be welded as it uh, is full of impurities and generally will crack again if you try to weld it. So cold stitching is a quite an old technique which has been around for many years which effectively seals the, the uh, crack. So what the cold stitcher does is he, he drills and taps a number of holes along the line of the crack like this. And from that, he'll actually tap those, thread lock a screw, uh, machine screw in there, and then chop the head of that off. What he'll then do is go along and do an overlapping set of screws in that area. What I haven't shown on this is obviously they'll go to the end of the crack to ensure that the crack doesn't continue. And once that's done, effectively that seals the crack, but obviously it doesn't stop the crack opening up again. So what they then need to do is to put a series of stitches across there at a number of points, effectively as if you were stitching skin on your body. Those again are drilled at a series of centers along the hole and a stitching piece put in to actually bridge the gap. So the stitching pieces are quite interesting, made from some specialist steel formed and pressed to provide and slot into that hole with, that's been drilled along there. Uh, a jig uh, like this is specifically used to make sure that the holes are at the right centres and then effectively that's put in across the crack and cut off. Um, the stitching pins themselves are literally just a machine screw like this. Uh, again, of a certain material so that they're nice and hard, they expand at the same rate of the cast iron and hopefully that gives a water and fluid tight seal and prevents that crack from opening up in the future. Hi guys, so I'm here at Lockwell, come to pick up the Singer engine. Uh, the guys done all the work on it and I'll do a little video shortly on that. It looks like Frankenstein with the amount of stitches it had on, but he's done a phenomenal job on something that was pretty tough. Okay, so here it is, as you can see. It's had lots and lots of stitching. Um, as you can hear, the block's actually really thin material. So it's had thread inserts put in. As you can see by this, needed a lot of work to get this block right. Multiple thread inserts around the stud heads, lots of stitching around all of these. In fact, this one at the end here that was quite badly cracked, he had to clamp and pull in. And as you see, stitches along the side as well. So it really is Frankenstein's child, this, uh, this block. Hopefully now in a position where it's in a decent state to be uh, moving forwards. I do have one potential issue. I've dropped the crank in just to, to see how it goes. And actually, as you can see, this piston is actually getting very, very close to the top, if not slightly over. Um, so I might have to adopt a, a system that a lot of the turbocharged car guys use to uh, have a, a decomp plate made for it. Uh, so that it doesn't uh, cause it. So as I said previously, quite an interesting engine these. Only a two bearing crank with the bearing at the rear of the engine, at the front of the engine, the only two bearings on it, uh, and then your four bearings then to take the conrods 
known as a bent wire crank. Uh, actually oil flows through the middle of the crank and then there's actually a pipe on each side. You have to be really careful when rebuilding these that those pipes aren't blocked as it can cause quite a problem. Unlike a lot of modern engines, uh, the way these don't actually have seals on the end of them, it actually has a reverse um, spiral thread on them so as the engine rotates theoretically it spins oil back towards the engine uh, and stops it getting out. There's a lot of copper pipe work to go in here to distribute the oil around the engine and those will be done uh, once I've got the crank sorted out which you can see needs a, an amount of work due to some corrosion on the cranks. When, we, when I first got the engine it was totally seized and this wouldn't move around at all but actually uh, we've got it all freed up now moving. As you can see the block itself is incredibly thin, you hear it from this, not your, like your typical cast iron engines which are very thick, it really is only a few millimetres so very uh, brittle and delicate engine. As you can see, um, date on the side of here, when, when it was cast, 27th of the 8th 1932, so over 90 years old this, uh, this engine, so hopefully uh, with a bit of work we'll be able to get this uh, up and running and back in a car. So here you go, that's it for this video. In the next video we'll have some more progress on the engine uh, or maybe I might even have a look at the, the heads and explain the, uh, the difference, differences between various heads. I've actually got four here as a mix of sports and saloons heads so some quite interesting stuff on those. So speak to you soon. Cheers Bane.